All right, Greg. Uh, we are we are rolling here now. So uh, good morning. Good morning. We have um, officially uh, saved the daylight once again uh, this year. So we we've made it through daylight savings time. So congratulations, everyone, for saving the daylight. Exactly. Um, still, still want them to stop doing this, but anyway, uh, today's. Uh, Topic du jour um, is sort of a continuation from from last week's episode where we're you know really talking about non-standard observations and really understanding this sort of background noise in your environment or background setting to really kind of get you the the context for for different observations, especially when it comes to human behavior. So I figured this week you know I want to talk about sort of anomaly detection and and really just like connecting the dots, right? So people often say, hey, I saw something odd or this seemed weird to me, you know, but and, and it's, it's good. Maybe you see something, but it's it's really the, connecting it all together and, and putting it all together and getting the so what is the most important part, right? Because humans do odd Certainly. stuff all the time. Most of it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, there's a lot of noise out there. So it, it, it helps if it's more like domain uh, specific, but I kind of want to go over that stuff and then also sort of why why we miss those things you know there's a lot of investigations or after action reviews you know and afterwards it's 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 very easy to see um, yep. which is why there's so many people making videos and talking about things that already happened in the past I don't see a lot of them going out and showing stuff but that's a that's a, that's a separate issue I guess um, but it but it is you know it, it's always of course you know hindsight 2020 and you know the Monday morning quarterbacking there's all those terms for a reason right it's in the moment in time so I, I was hoping that uh, again you could could start off you have a couple sort of personal stories um, and it came from a, a, another lessons learned that you you wrote so then of course any of our patreon subscribers you can go on there read the whole thing which I would highly suggest because there's some great stories that go along with it maybe you'll mention some of them here but but i mean meaning stuff you can read about news stories and the headlines uh, not just your personal yeah. ones and there's a ton of great information in there but there's this one section sort of i, I guess i'll have you read because it, it, it's some personal stories that are a, kind of exactly what i'm talking about and and of course you know we teach this stuff too because how many how many examples do we use of us missing things in the moment and then afterwards yeah. and the slap yep. in the forehead should have had a v8 you know what the hell was screaming at me and so i i like those personal examples too because um you know it kind of shows how that stuff can happen and then uh, since we were there obviously we can we can break everything down because we're the ones involved in the incident so um that's sort of i guess a little intro for today greg and i'll let you you jump into it i appreciate that brian good morning everybody uh we're going to talk about volume 25 of lessons learned it's all about Allison Brainy's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And the section that Brian had highlighted is called the right place at the right time. Sometimes the crime scene you're approaching stuns you. Sometimes it's events leading up to your arrival. Generally, Hollywood has no idea how strange it is working the streets, catching the bad guys, and then trying to connect the dots on human behavior pattern recognition and analysis. I'll give you a couple of personal examples. On a rainy night after midnight in a suburban metropolitan Detroit industrial area, a uniformed street cop called out a license plate of a suspicious vehicle. The road where the copper found this sled, a vehicle in street terminology, didn't have an access ramp to the I-696 freeway. So often midnight shift, uh, RA robbery armed suspects would take this particular street accidentally thinking they could wind up uh, you know, wind through the sparsely occupied factories without being seen by coppers and then access I-696 quickly and then be on their way south into Detroit scot-free. So any night, especially a rainy night, meant that traffic in this region was suspicious and needed to be checked. Many times police checked the vehicles in this area because there were lazy cops who chose to park here and catch a couple hours of shut-eye. And they didn't want to surprise a burglary boy or get victimized while they slept. And this is one such story. The copper first drove the vehicle, drove by the vehicle, noticed it was running, headlights on, stuck in the mud off of a tour. And that tour is a triangular shaped corner where two streets meet. And oh, the driver's door was open. The personal account of this copper was that he first jotted down the plate and then went to take a piss and get some sleep uh, behind a neighboring closed factory. And when he emerged sometime later, he noted the vehicle was still there, still running, headlights on, door open, and still stuck in the mud. The rain's pouring down relentlessly. And at this point, the officer runs the plate and calls for a wrecker. Now, as the officer was alone and he hadn't called out a traffic stop, just a suspicious vehicle running unoccupied, I drove up from the south end of the city to see if he needed any help. 
When I arrived, he told me what he observed, and I asked him if he'd searched the area for a suspect, presumably the driver on foot, and he told me he had not. And based on my personal experience, his calls I had investigated myself, I advised the veteran officer to make sure he checked under the vehicle when there were wreck arrives, uh, as I found a couple of people who had lived or died after running themselves over with their own vehicle. And while I was checking the rainy, dark recess of the abandoned businesses, I heard the officer with an excited voice call for a coroner and a traffic unit. When the wrecker lifted the vehicle out of the mud, the missing driver was discovered under the vehicle, deceased. It's actually simpler to die in this manner than you think. When you're trying to get your vehicle unstuck, you sometimes put your vehicle in reverse. And they open the driver's door and watch the rear left driver's side tire to see if it's spinning. Now, if the vehicle should suddenly lurch, the open door strikes you, pushing you under the front left driver's side tire. And voila, the car is now stopped because you're no longer there to press the accelerator and position directly on top of you. This veteran copper was a bit of a, a bad luck or good luck shit magnet. Each caper I was in with them was more bizarre than the last. And one night in that same general area, a uniformed officer heading west on the freeway that bisects Detroit from the suburbs from each other in the dark early mornings, he called out a vehicle haul in the mail, his vernacular for speeding. And when he became annoyed by the other vehicle, one traveling faster than he was, he finally stopped it, intending to give the driver a good tongue lashing. He told me it was immediately impeded by a language barrier and that there was difficulty in communication. So I stopped by to check on the solo veteran copper stopping a car on midnight shift. And upon arrival, he mentioned that both drivers and the front seat passenger were soaking wet. On this specific night, there was no rain. And sometimes when burglary suspects pull commercial jobs, they accidentally hit the sprinkler system, getting in or out of the building and become soaked. So I decided to take a look for myself. Again, a personal experience. So both men were hovered, covered head to toe with blood and human particulates, the kind of junk you get on yourself when you're carving up a side of beef with a hatchet in the dark. And sure enough, moments into the stop, another unit, a very recent homicide was on the radio stating they had multiple victims at their scene. A couple of the decedents had been virtually beheaded. And the detective mentioned that whoever the fleeing suspects were, they'd likely be covered in blood. The suspects were arrested in short order after it was determined that the victims and the suspect both spoke the same language and were of the same Eastern European region. And even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day. So from the unbelievable but true file, I'll add one more incident from that same city. Two average, uh, very average police officers were headed to breakfast instead of checking their assigned area after on-duty roll call. And fate had them subcutting. That's when a driver takes a shortcut through a residential subdivision to avoid heavy traffic posed by drivers headed to work or back home on the major surface streets. So while on some non-distinct side street that goes from here to there just after eight in the morning, they encounter a man running out of a residential driveway into the street directly in front of them. They stop short primarily because they almost hit him. And additionally, because they notice he's covered from blood from his waist to his shoulders. So these coppers called it into dispatch as a medical run, advising they were going to be taking this victim of a lawn mowing accident to the closest hospital. The bloody subject advised the officers that he had cut his hands, dislodging some trash from the lawnmower, and now he needed emergency medical service as he had cut his hands. The officers had the suspect jump in the back, and uh, they drove him a few miles away to Macomb Hospital Center. They never got out of their patrol car, not to search him, identify him, get his name, nothing. Not even open the door for him when he got in. After pulling up at the emergency entrance, the passenger officer gets out of the vehicle and lets the subject out of the back seat because police vehicles don't allow the backseat passenger the luxury of opening the doors on their own. And moments later, after arriving at their favorite breakfast location, the officers learned that the suspect that they just dropped off at the hospital had no injuries. The blood was donated from the homicide victim he had just murdered. When he was escaping the crime scene, he fled through the backyards, hopped the fences and onto the next street where he ran right in front of a marked police unit. The morning shift officers had driven the suspect away from the scene into a local ER where he was apprehended after cleaning up in the restroom and attempting to hitch a ride back to the scene to recover his suspect vehicle. Apathy can get you killed, and it happens to the best of us. I made a stop on a suspicious vehicle in the north end while I was headed for a late off-duty roll call. The sun's already up. I had a long night of chasing bad guys, and I was extremely tired. Remember, you're most susceptible to danger when you're mentally tired, bored out of your mind, or completely overwhelmed by events, and I was mentally tired. I noticed a vehicle doing a slow roll through the sub, and it was occupied by four people. 
it rolled through a stop sign like it was free and immediately upon stopping them, I'm getting a bad rendition of who's on first from the occupants. An important clue we call verbal diarrhea and I knew right then I was in the trick bag. I made an interesting observation. The passengers were wearing three or four jackets each and, and nice ones like leather, faux fur, and it didn't fit the morning I was in, and especially since they were all, you know, methy McCrack heads. I also noted that uh, some of them had two or three watches on their wrist and an assortment would appear to be fake or real jewelry on their fingers, around their necks, on their ears. Perhaps I would have, uh, you know, been more well rested. I would have added up these anomalies quickly. And thank God the street guys were looking out for me. I called for a cover car. As soon as the cover car rolls up, we're off to the races. Each suspect flees in a, a different direction. And thankfully, we were able to round them up in short order. And soon the day shift was taken multiple locations where burglaries had occurred. I found out later that the driver was dangerous and wanted. And the booking officer located the knives that were pictured below in the driver's front pockets. There's a, one of the gravity knives and a switchblade. And it was quite big, as I remember. Uh, I started to shake. I was guilty of DWHE way, driving while head up ass, and I had the happy head. I knew I was almost at the police station. And from riding horses for a long time, it's like a horse heading back to the barn. The hardest time to control your horse and get them to pay attention is when they're headed back to the barn. That's why most accidents will occur within just a few blocks of your home. You think I got this, yet your mind is already checked out. So those are uh, obviously some some pretty good good stories and there's 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 more in there folks and like i said so if the, the patreon subscribers you can read the whole thing see the see the photos and stuff that go along with Please it do. because it, it's uh it obviously adds a lot to to the story but you know they're just great i i i you know wanted you to go over those because they're just such great examples of all these little things adding up and you're sitting here in the clear light of day yep. going how did you not see this happening it's like well i'll tell you why you didn't see this happening so um you know yep. again again uh, like on the um yeah, because you you brought up some some you brought up a few you know cognitive performance factors, uh, and then you just talked about apathy, and then hey, being tired, and then now you're yep. heading back to the barn, so to speak, um, of of why you sort of miss this stuff, and and it just goes to things we've talked about in different episodes where you cannot be, you know, one hundred percent all the time. You just can't have this heightened level of awareness all the time. It's 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 not how it really works. You can get if you get you'll one either get burnt nope. out that way or you'll just create really bad corrupt file folders and non-event feedback loops and then your brain just figures oh, if I just stay in this state then I don't have to worry about anything because you won't actually see anything so I, I guess we'd start it with sort of like anomaly detection and then and then you know what we would call pattern recognition and yeah put connecting the dots because that's what pattern recognition is is is, is really just connecting the dots for the purpose of using the information right each one of those things you know if I'm just looking at things in my environment just for the hell of it okay it might be great Great observation exercise for fun, but but the, the, the so so what is what is that? It's what is the so what? How are you using this information in some helpful yeah. manner? So I I just but, wanted to start it and frame it there, Greg. No, no, it's wonderful. And and there, there's one, two, three things that you brought up that I wrote down while we were talking that are very important. Number one, humans don't attend to their surroundings. Humans go day to day to take a poop, to get something to eat, to make love, to watch a TV show, to work, to make money, to make love, take a poop and watch TV. What they're not doing is processing the information that's around them. They're not. And, and that is the essence of situation awareness is being aware that you're in a situation. And if you don't attend to it, that you might get in a traffic crash or get kidnapped or robbed or anything else. So the very first thing is you can't attend to a bunch of stuff. You can attend to one and you can only give 100 percent of your your focus, your your uh, uh, attention to that uh, thing. So when you're driving back from a busy night on the road, the last thing you think that you're going to encounter is a car load of felons. And, and that's the first thing that you should think you're going to encounter. And that should tighten your shot group. So when you're driving, you go, hey, I need to be a little more alert and aware than I am right now. I'm going to be in the trick bag if I don't. Now, second thing, non-event feedback loop. The problem is if we're not pinging our environment, if we're not throwing a rock into the pond, the pond gives us no ripples. 
So even though those events are happening around us in real time, Brian, we don't see them, smell them, taste them, or feel them. Why? Because we're not looking for them. So that's why we say things come out of nowhere. The nowhere they come out of is that vacuous space between our ears that is seeing the monkey playing the ukulele rather than going, holy shit, this guy's changing lanes very fast. I wonder what he's up to. And, and that's why I use interesting, not suspicious. Right. Because everything in life is suspicious, right? Well, it can but, be but if you want it to. Yeah, it can, right. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. People, when they write and when they make movies and they do all the, the, the things that we normally see, they have to go the dun, dun, dun. So we tune in that there's something suspicious. But that's not how life works. Life should work on your interest level. This is more interesting than that. So therefore, I'm going to give it more of my attention. And the third thing you said that really ties these together for me, and, and don't let me forget the breadcrumbs, right? You made a point at the very beginning of the podcast about noise. And, and I would tell everybody that noise is another good meter to think about how your brain processes information. Uh, uh, we're like the, the three bears. Uh, not enough noise. I can't sleep. I mean, I can't hear a thing. It's absolutely antiseptic in my environment. So what do I do? I turn on the TV as background noise or the White radio or I get one of them yeah. wave things, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, right? Why? Because I can't relax because my brain is too busy and it's listening for that silence, right? And then the second thing is the clinically just right. Hey, I lay down, I fall asleep almost immediately. I don't hear any, oh, wait a minute. What was that downstairs? Okay, so now I hear that, you know, aberrant noise, something that I didn't expect, and now I'm going to tune into it. And then the fourth level would be too much noise. Like like you and I both suffer from tinnitus or tinnitus, depending on what doctor you go to. And and with me, I got my own permanent. Yeah, I, 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 saying, I have all the time. that. Otherwise, my brain it, it, provides it, it, the noise with the tinnitus. It does, <laughs> yeah. you know. So, so uh, uh, I would say that that's how you learn to reckon with your environment. Look, I almost got killed because it was four to one odds in broad daylight, and I got my head squarely right up my ass. And these guys had just come from burglary. I learned later how they did the burglary and that they're taking everything from the scene. And the guy with the knives on it, you know, he was the one that always fought himself out with the cops. There uh, some Sterling Heights coppers, and we're going to be training in Sterling Heights, uh, had uh, recently had this guy flee from them and stole cars and fought with the officers. So, look, I'm in the frame of mind as, look, you guys lost, I'll get you back to the freeway. I'm in the frame of mind is you guys don't belong here. Head back down south or, you know, I'll get serious. I'm, I'm so focused on other things that these cues, like why would they have three or four uh, different watches on the wrist? Clearly, they're going through drawers. And as soon as they find something, they've done it before. It's not their first rodeo. They're sliding them up there because it's easier to carry. Why did they have their pockets filled with jewelry and, and knives and stuff? Because as they're finding stuff, they're throwing out. Why the extra jackets? When you're looking through, you go, nice, 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 nice. What do you do? You're, you're only 100 pounds because you're smoking the crack. So you're throwing those jackets on top of each other. So even if you have to flee from the suspect vehicle, Brian, you've got something to take to the pawn shop. You've got something to sell or trade for that dope. And, and so all those cues, and I'd seen this before, that's the problem. And none of it's making sense because I didn't engage in sense making. Sense making is a process. It's a thing you must engage in. It does not happen naturally. Now, your brain does have left and right lateral limits. Uh, 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 my favorite song uh, grown up from The Who was the rock opera Tommy, uh, The Pinball Wizard, where they said a deaf, dumb, and blind kid sure may, plays a mean pinball. Why? Because I knew I was tuned into a frequency, Brian, that not all of my neighbors had, that that nobody in my family seemed to have. My dad was the closest to me because I was this empath. I'm reading things in the environment. So I knew I had that ability. But guess when that ability went away? When I was drinking, okay? Uh, when I was tired, when I just got up in the morning and I didn't have a clear head. And so we're most vulnerable to missing the breadcrumbs when we have moments of uh, sheer boredom and, and moments of sheer uncanny stress and the certain types of jobs that are, how, do, how does an industrial accident occur? Uh, many times the industrial accident occurs because I'm not tuned in exactly to what I'm doing. And I say, well, I'll hold that with my foot for just a second and something spins off the lathe and then you know, I've got a cash well, crop. And then you, you know you, that. That, that's a that's a great example too with the industrial stuff. But that, that that's why even you know every pilot has a checklist that they go down. No matter how many times they've flown that yep. plane, how many hours, you still have a checklist. Why? So you don't miss anything. 
But the problem is, especially with the situations you brought up in your everyday life, there is no checklist. You can't go it, down through yes. those things in a sense, even though you kind of already did. Because I'm listening to you tell the story, and you and you're, you're setting it up for for the purposes of telling the story. But but you're it's actually how yep. you sense make. It's like well, they're cutting through this neighborhood. Well, a lot of people do that so they can avoid this busy street, especially if it's rush hour. Yep. You know, I've seen that. Everyone's seen that who lives in a residential neighborhood. I've got it right here outside yes, my house, where especially during the morning rush to people going to work and then kids going to school. There's this road out here. They even put the big speed bumps in because I mean, people drive 50 miles an hour. Right. So, you know, when it's like 30. And a little speed. orange guy with the finger well, and a little flag, it's, right? It's going downhill too. So that's the problem is that yep. no, your people aren't even realizing that you're, it's like, dude, you're doing 40 and there's kids going to school uh, uh, on the, on the sidewalk yep. next to you. But, uh, but it, it, so, th so that's part of it. So you're, you're actually laying it all out. Those, um, the, you're, you're, you're connecting, you're not connecting dots, even though the breadcrumbs are all there, right? So it's all there. You're yep. going, well, he's subcutting here. Well, that's odd. He's got an extra watch on. He's got this. And it's like that, that denial is still so strong sometimes, you know, because your brain is always telling you, look, man, just yep. you're, you're almost off shift or you're going home or, you know what I mean? It's probably nothing because 99 out of a hundred times it, it is exactly what you think it what it typically is or nothing you know what i'm saying and, and yep. that's and if you're just a normal person going through your life i would say that number increases to 99.9999 you know what i mean because you I don't intercount that you know you're you're telling this from perspective of a police officer where you are seeing those things more often you are you know involved in these situations more often but you know yep. the average person that's why it's like we always talk about i was you know i always do the the gas stations and parking lots it's like look you go fill up your car with gas all the freaking time everything you see on tv is a gas station being robbed or shooting at a gas station exactly. or a, or a drug deal gone wrong at a gas station yet you just go in there blindly i'm like these yep. are those points so it's still uh, so powerful uh when it comes to things like denial and not putting that together so so you know you can you, can you talk about those sort of breadcrumbs and why we don't always connect the yep. dots even when they're apparent even when i'm going well i saw this then i saw this and thought Absolutely. that was odd and you and i appreciate you using explaining sort of you call that these are things I find interesting, not suspicious. I think people get yep. that wrong or, or misunderstand some of our points we make sometimes, especially on the social media, even though you say, like, you'll be in a video, and it's like, well, that's interesting to me. And people are like, hey, there's nothing suspicious about what we're doing. And I have to go back and look through the videos. Like, well, he never said the word suspicious the entire time. Exactly. They filled that in with their, with their exactly. own brain. Exactly, because but, they're, but, look, they're priming themselves by using an inner dialogue that doesn't fit the scenario because we're primed, we're programmed that when we see a video, like like a dear friend of us sent, sent that video this morning, and I'm going, okay, why would this camera be set up at this intersection? Why would this behavior be being tracked? And that's why when I started that, rather than saying this is bogus, I started by saying this leaves me conflicted because these things are interesting, but I can't account for them. That's how you should go through life. Because yeah, now you're not and then of course you, you to make a decision. You, you said I want to hear Brian's opinion, and I was like, yeah, this video is junk. Yeah, here's a better one. <laughs> the first three words, <laughs> this bit blows. You know exactly. So, so the idea is when we make checklists, and everybody makes checklists. Everybody says we are not going to have check in the box training, and then they bring out the checklist <laughs> of the things that you're going to do during the training. <laughs> Am I lying? Okay. So the the idea is stop. First of all, stop lying to yourselves and everybody around you. We all know it. Uh, uh, but what makes a list? So everything makes a list. So first of all, we go okay. Well, we're only going to make these three essential things. But then the guy could be walking or running. It so that means five essential things. But if he has a car, well, a car is different than a truck. And then now the next thing we know, we have 72 pages, Brian, and we have two blank pages at the uh, end for our marker that we can add those things onto. That's not how life works. Life works that you have to look at the level of interest of a thing in its environment and anticipate likely spirals. And I'll give you why we missed that in a second. Uh, so I'm uh, driving northbound on Waltham from eight mile, headed back. I was always late for roll call. I was always see me after roll call getting yelled at by the supervisor. Why? Because I gave my exact shift. And when my shift ended, then I went to the station and checked out of my vehicle and went up and roll calls over. Why? Because folks would head in 30 minutes early for off-duty roll call just to sign out. And half of them were asleep in the off-duty roll call room. I didn't like that. I like to work right up to the wire. And you know who else knew the cops went in 30 minutes early? All the bad guys. Yeah. So all the bad guys were hitting places out there. And I was always getting these incredible felonies at dawn from midnight shift. So I'm going northbound in this 
Vic is cooking southbound. I mean, he's, you know, really hauling a mail. He used the story earlier. So I pull over to just get a look at what's going on inside the vehicle. And I see four of the nicest tires and rims. Brian, I want you to imagine a standard car, a uh, Camaro, uh, you know, a Nova, you know, from the old days, uh, the car that you drive today, right? I want you to imagine that with four tires and rims perfectly put together just off of a vehicle, right? Inside the vehicle with you. It would be a little cramp, okay? Yeah. So the back seat's loaded, the front passenger seat's loaded, and this kid that I go by, he looks at me like, holy crap, what's going on? So really quickly, I go down a checklist. Well, he's taking those tires to a vehicle that's broken down, and he bought them in Warren. Warren's an automotive center. It's like four minutes after seven. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's open this early. Take a look. He's clipping. He's on the back street. So all I do is hit the wigwags and flip a U, and we're off to the races, right? So the idea is that things present themselves to you all day long. The breadcrumbs are on the ground. And when we step over the breadcrumbs, we go, somebody should sweep that up or we're going to get in. Yeah. We never, ever assume that there's other likelihoods. So the range of likelihoods can't go on forever. I used to argue with the Marines about that all the time because there was a difference between East Coast Marines and West Coast Marines at, at different points in their careers. And they would go, more information necessary. No, no, Gary Klein, you don't need more information necessary. You need to make a choice. Now, I'm not bagging on Klein. Klein's a genius, and the stuff that he does is well thought out. And, and I would suggest them reading that after they bought our gosh damn textbook first. But the idea is that we are in positions, Brian, you as a scout sniper and me as a copper, where we had to make the call based on the best information in that time at that place now. So if you want to make a good decision, what you got to do is you got sense, make the shit out of it fast. And the idea was that I had to plug different holes and go, okay, guys coming from this. Now it's not open. The guy's uh, uh, going fast. Well, he just wants to make the light. The guy's got the tires. He's helping a buddy out. And you know what? None of them passed the smell test. So yeah. I give myself a three, a rule of three. And in those three, if I can't get that, then immediately I have to say something else is going on. I'm the problem. I'm just not tuned into that radio frequency. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and you're, you know, you're going down those uh, sort of, well, what what could this likely be? And you're playing out those explanatory yep. storylines, and then you're you're trying to gather artifacts and support those claims. And there, if there's nothing there, then it has to be something else. And and this kind of yep. goes back to you know what you're doing was sort of my 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 question too, is you know how how can I prime myself to not only spot those, but but more importantly, sort of put them together and derive some sort of meaning from it, right? Um, you know, you you, you gave yep. those examples of the the tire ones, great, because it's like, well, why would he have four tires if he's going to replace one tire, or why would he have this exactly and why would at this time? And and those simple questions um, actually typically answer most most things because most things only fit, you know most things only fit a certain story or a certain pattern or a certain likelihood level, right? Yep. And it's not about what I see almost people trying to do, especially with different experiments that I've seen, which are not very well done. But, you know, it's like you're, you're trying to use some sort of statistical model of inference uh, or to determine some percentage of likelihood and it's like well well no it's not it's not yep. like that you don't need to do that because there's st each one of those events are different in a sense because there's so many different factors involved that are that are different but what it is is what is it which is it more likely the guy's going to change a tire for his buddy who just got a flat <laughs> or or he just right. ripped those from somewhere because you don't need four new ones if you're going to fix it flat and nothing's open exactly. at that time. And so you can kind of run down that checklist. But it, it, like, it, it, and again, it's just how do I prime myself to do that? I mean, we give some examples like of the, that's why we tell people, you know, the find the, look for the feral cats in your neighborhood because it's an observation game. Right. And feral cats hide in negative space. They hide underneath cars in between buildings. So exactly. you're, one, you're going to see them. So you're so going to get some. it forces you to tune in. Well, it but and, yeah, and, exactly. and you're going to get a little reward. You're going to get that dopamine because you you will start seeing more cats than you ever <laughs> you ever you ever thought that were, right. were out there so it, it, it's in a sense it's a game but it's a it's a, it's a reward based game that also forces you to look into negative space to slow down and go into those little areas the seams and gaps because that's where literally that's where feral cats hide out they don't just strut down the middle of the damn street you know um so no. so it's like so, you know we, we give those examples but how, how do i do that how do i prime myself for that 
No, that's such a great question, Brian. And, and again, you got me right and stop. It's too early in the morning and I'm feeling a little dicey from staying at that <laughs> hotel in Houston. Yeah. Those guys can bite me. I, I do not feel well. Uh, so here's the thing, Brian. Heuristics are with us and they surround us always. And those are template and prototypical matches of what we know in our internal baseline, my experiences, my external baseline, things I've seen in life, right? And so everybody goes, those are your personal experiences. No, I see things when I drive to work and I will notice if the billboard has changed or I will notice if that place is torn down overnight. Those are different experiential uh, uh, comparisons than my internal baseline. Look, I've made an arrest 75 times at the same street corner and each time the person had a gun. So on the 76th, I'm going to be patting you down. Those are two different standards. So those are my heuristics, right? Then the next Next one that I use generally is geo. The, the first couple of examples I gave you were geographics. For example, the, the area of the freeway where all the factories were closed, but still we have vehicles back there idling. So a lot of people make love, but people uh, uh, don't pull over to try to make love in an area of haunted houses and decapitation. <laughs> so this area was one of those where you had to really know where this area dead ended, right? To get back there and, and it was creepy. Uh, uh, so somebody back there is up to no good or they're lost and you got to get them out of there. So that's a geo, uh, seeing that sub cutting Vic and, you know, doing the slow roll. That was a geo. And then guess what? As you start going, well, that's interesting. You pull up your Atmo file and all of a sudden the atmospheric start to change, right? Uh, the vehicle starts accelerating away from you, or you notice the, the driver adjusting the rear view mirror to get a better look at who's behind him. And now the people start chattering and you see some, you know, uh, a movement inside the Vic as if they were going to try to conceal something. All of those things happen, but they, they happen right in front of you. And if you're not tuned in, that movie's still playing. You just missed it. You missed all those cues, right? The cues were never not present. There's no way to conceal them. And then what do I do? Well, all of a sudden now I'm on the traffic stop and I see the bio. You know, your histamines are up, your nostrils are flared, you're sweating, and, and you know, it's not an area where you should be sweating. And that's where the kinesics, the icing, the frosting, the, the sparkles on the cake come in. And I notice that the person is nodding yes for no, or I see that the person continues to... Uh, take a look at the person in the back seat before they answer me. Why would you do that? And then you tell me you don't know the person and, oh, it's my grandma's car. So the idea is I give you this rich uh, 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 volume. Uh, uh, I give you a palette. That's the word I'm looking for. You ever see the thing that the guy sticks his thumb through and it's got all the different colors on it? Yeah, Remember yeah, that? Yeah, I think it was Bob, Bob Ross, Ross or whatever yeah, his name yeah. was. That yeah, yeah. Okay, so think of that color palette for a minute. And then we give you a semi. Uh, human behavior pattern recognition Alice gives you a semi that's wrapped in bisqueen and it's white and it's perfect. You paint the story. Now, now you know how that, that book, you know, Peter Griffin, ah, Lois, I had my thumb there, Lois, you know, the, where he's reading a book and he knows what the adventure is. And then he doesn't want that adventure. So he has to go back and change the adventure. Right. That's our lives. Uh, right. Okay. There's adventures happening all around us that we're not clued into because we unwisely think, that it's our story that's the most important story that's in the book. If we start to try to tune in to the surrounding stories and we'll hear a little bit and piece of each one of them, and then we, we take a look at the artifacts and evidence and what they're telling us. In other words, lead where the story is taking us. Don't, don't, don't sit there and go, well, I must force this. You don't force a river. The Royal Gorge wasn't uh, uh, forced. You know, uh, it, it happened naturally. So when a person is talking to you, what are they going to uh, uh, let in on? They're going to let in on, hey, I really need to go home. Hey, I, uh, I, I had a traffic stop once where the guy was in a stole and it didn't know it was a stolen at this point. And the guy goes, look, I, I don't want to be a dick, but I really got to take a poop. I got to poop. Yeah, of course you got to poop because your uh, catecholamine group is going, should I stay or should I go? And that's one of the things that you're going to do. Now, could it have been another thing? Yeah, but I have to account for the things that are occurring right in front of me. And those stories led nowhere, Brian. I was spinning. I was on a unicycle juggling, and it didn't go anywhere. And just like I said, the who's on first, everybody knows the who's on first, second base, right? That story with uh, uh, Lou Costello and uh, Bud Abbott. Uh, uh, Abbott and Costello, right? Why why does that story make us laugh? Because it goes nowhere. And that's what you're going to get on the traffic stop where you're going, hey, uh, where are you headed? Sky's blue. Uh, Well, where are you coming from? I need an orange. You know, and you're going, wait a minute, this, you know, discordant answer is not what I would normally expect. Uh, then I start looking and I go, well, the person doesn't smell like alcohol or look like he's on drugs. And I didn't stop him because their driving was such that I would believe they're impaired. 
So what's this person trying to hide from me? And you know what? It could be a significant other. It could be your kid. It could be a student in your class. You could be HR and wondering why that person's coming in late every day. And they're coming in late because they have to go to the food bank to get food for their kids. So that's where when you're posting stuff on social media, none of which I see, and I know you get sniped a lot. And, and I don't mean a lot. I mean, I know you get sniped more than one per posting, right? Which is a lot to me. Uh, because what people want to do, Brian, they don't want to look at the post and learn from it. They want to look at the post and tell their story. LinkedIn is full of people that want to read the story. And it says, hey, we've done this and veterans for that and the other. And a guy writes in there, hey, I've been to Hong Kong. What? And, and you know me, I walk around the room throwing shit going, that was not the point of the story. So I would ask everybody listening to the sound of my voice today, ask yourself when you drive by something interesting, ask yourself, what's the point of this story? I wonder where this story is going next. What should I see next if my conclusions that I'm making in my head are right? What should I see, smell, and taste, and feel next? And then pull over and watch it transpire. You know, one of the greatest things that we do is work away from our families to do in-person training because it allows us to be in an Uber, in a cab, in an area that we're not familiar with, in an airport with people we're not familiar with. And Brian, that's why we stay sharp because we're constantly tuned in to those stories that are around. Yeah, and and you know you you it's the what what should I expect to see next? Where is this likely headed? And and that's with everything. Right. You know, I, I do that at home especially to stay, you know, even a step ahead of the insurgent cuz she's getting she's getting so smart. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's always trying to pull something over or do whatever, or make a couple bucks to go do this because she wants to buy something sure. or this. And it's all it's all good. I'm, I'm you know, but but because she's always got something going on and I'm like, all right, well, she and so now, of course, you'll you'll appreciate this because it just you just reminded me of it. But she's. It's like, um, you know, she's really down and in on her computer. Like, you know, it's only school stuff on there. You know what I mean? It's not like a, it's like a school computer. There's no, and I'm like, well, what are you, what are you working on? Do you need some help with homework or what's up? She's like, no, 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 leave me. Uh, I want to show you something later. Uh, I have something. And I'm like, okay, this, where the F is she going with this? And so she goes, gets her computer later on after dinner. And she's like, all right. And, and even tries to hook it up to the TV because she wants to give a presentation. And I'm going like, all right, what is this? Mm -hmm. So this is going somewhere. And it was all about how she yep. she wants to do, uh, she wants to be go to online school now, not like for like college later in life or something like that. Now in sixth grade, she wants to go through. So she actually put a presentation together with ten reasons why. It's an incredible presentation, and and I'm going like, what is going like where, level of effort is oh, amazing. It, I, right? And so she went through yep. and did all the stuff. And so I said, all right, first of all, let me be just upfront like. That was an incredible presentation. I appreciate how you laid out the artifacts and evidence, the reasons why. I even asked you some questions. She had answers for my rebuttals, even to the point where she's like, okay, I figured you'd ask that, and that brings me to the, my next point. And I'm like, okay. But I'm, <laughs> the whole time I'm like, where, where is this coming from, right? And so I find yep. out you know, that she's there's different stuff going on at school, nothing serious or involving her. But then one of her good friends – from school last year, I didn't know this, is doing like the half homeschool online. You can do mm -hmm. it through a mm -hmm. school and like go like once a week and you get a lesson plan. Right. And all. So I'm finding out like, oh, her, like one of her best friends is doing that. And that's why she has such compelling arguments. <laughs> and she looked up why she did this, but, but it came from that. So the whole time I'm sitting here like, what? Cause you know, my wife is, you know, she's doing the are like, are you being bullied at school? Is there a teacher doing something? Like, what is going on? Yep. You know, because obviously the school is the problem, right? And I'm like, no, the, the the issue is she got an idea for a friend and she wants to be at home to do stuff and not have to go to school all day. I was like, well, who, what kid doesn't want to, you know, not exactly. go to school all day? But it was just those, right. those and, so and the, the MLM thing, DCOA, you the know what I mean? Insurgent hurt. Exactly. The, the only thing the insurgent hurt was the benefits of this program. And and she wanted to enlighten you and the wifey to, hey, look how good this was. Now, oh, she's yeah. not bringing up any of the other stuff that went along with that. So what, here's two things, though, that made it interesting from what you said, Brian. And this shows that you're a behavior profiler. Okay. You said when you saw some cues early on and up front, oh, this is going somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And then you made the comment later on. You said, where is this coming from? So it's beautiful because what you're doing is you're conducting a test on the environment. You're throwing the rock in the pond and seeing where the ripples go. And folks, this analogy is very simple. You drop a rock in the pond, the ripples go out from the pond. All ponds have ripples. Now, most of those ripples just go to the shore. They come back and then they balance out, meaning they go back to, to sedentary. 
Now, what happens most ponds, though, is you have other things that are going on, like life. So now the ripples go out and they hit a lily pad. And when they hit the lily pad, a frog jumped because it was surprised by it. And when that frog jumped, that surprised the bird and the bird flew. Now, 99% of humanity goes, oh, pretty bird. Uh, you need to roll the tape back and you need to go, what created the event that I'm in now? And you have to do this quickly. In our world, you have to do it quickly or you get squashed like a bug on a windshield. Uh, um, and then once you do it, you got to latch onto a few artifacts that are in that surrounding and go, okay, this is about school. And, and, and the great thing is both you and your wife got it immediately. It's about school. But then once you, you looked at the usual suspect, uh, teachers, other kid, bullying, this, okay, and it fell drastically short, did it not? And, and so, okay, well, the issue is who she fell in with and what seed did they plant? What I love is, is that the explanatory storyline here fit, and, and we jokingly, Brian and I have a bunch of uh, uh, things like calling a car a Vic and then calling a, a suspect vehicle a sled. Those are things that are colloquialisms that we get used to. And, and here, one of the things that I would say is all roads lead to Rome. What does that mean? That means no matter who questioned this person and what OP that I asked, can you tell me what you're seeing? All the artifacts and evidence tended to point in the same direction. Now, Brian, that's not groupthink. What I did is I enlisted the aid of others. I enlisted the aid of, of, of trusted people in that environment to say, hey, this is what my daughter presented. What are the things that you can glean from it? And then when I'm given all that big ball of 360 evidence, Brian, now I have a better picture. Now I can draw a more reasonable conclusion. So instead of ready, fire, aim, which most people do, and then they come to the, the wrong or a conclusion that's severely, uh, uh, like I, I hear cops to this day testify because there's no shortage of those crappy, shitty TV shows. And when you get up at four in the morning and you're trying to run and you know get your metabolism going and stuff, the, the only thing that's on is for sale stuff and then these crappy crime dramas. And you still hear the cop you know, go, well, you know, my hackles were, you know, raised when I heard that. And then, you know, that uh, I my, you know, here in the back of my neck, shut up with the hunch and give us the clue. Because sometimes, Brian, the clue is so overwhelming that you can't see it in the moment. It's like trying to look straight up at night and see one star until you start turning your head and doing the figure eight, you're not going to see that star because you, you can't. And so what happens when I'm so close to that car and all of a sudden I'm going, Hey, five jackets. That's unusual. Hey, this guy's got nine rings on his left hand and four watches. Hey, that's unusual. Those type of things didn't give me the bitch slap of reality that I needed. Why? Because something else was going on and that's life that's going on. That's uh, my stomach is hurting from dicey food at that crappy restaurant where I was 36 hours late for a flight, right? Brian, all of those things are as vivid as the play acting out on the stage in front of me. And if I don't tune in, if I don't look, look, do you remember when we were with Collier, the shaved ape, and uh, we were trying to train that team for the Colombian uh, Royal Marines. And I took the map out and I took a paper plate uh, that was, in the hotel room and I cut the inside of the paper plate out so we just had the big ring. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. White paper plate, cut in the inside circle, you're left with a ring but no plate. And then we took the styrofoam cups and I cut out the bottom of them. And what I was trying to display on the map were the lenses, Brian, right? We have the big wide lens of the whole area. And then with the cup, we have a smaller lens, a much smaller lens. And then with the point of the pencil, this is where we are now. So to consider everything in motion, I have to consider more than the things that are right in front of me that I'm seeing. I have to anticipate what else might be going on. And if I don't scratch the surface, then it's just going to be, hey, uh, get the dustpan and the broom. There's breadcrumbs on the floor. And that's where most people are, Brian. That's where they stop. They step over the breadcrumbs and never consider that may lead somewhere. No, that, and you brought up right there the sort of concentric rings there but you, you what you are seeing yeah. if i'm only right if i if i'm using just the styrofoam cup right that's a small circle so that's all i'm seeing well there's a bigger circle and then the circle goes out from there big. and it continues on and on and on throughout the entire world right eventually you can get that right. plate big enough holding from outer space and, and and put the entire globe you know inside of it and, and you don't have to touch a thing it's all going to fit right so so th that's the point is that you know and you, you bring it up is is one because because we asked to we, we we walk through it about how i can you know prime myself for for those kind of things is that you know you, in those moments when you're looking at those breadcrumbs you're only seeing it right there in front of you and you're not taking that step back that thirty thousand foot view and go how does this play out or how does this um 
you know, yep. uh, how does this affect or uh, how is this involved with literally the rest of the environment, the rest of the scene, the rest of the world, the rest of everything that's yep. going on? Because that's when the those rest of my day, you got to go up and down. You got to focus. Pull. You're exactly and, right. And, 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 and then, you know, you can theoretically wind the tape back. How do I hit rewind real quick and determine where this likely came from? Because that trajectory will tell yep. me where this is likely going next. And, and that's, that's, you know, being able to go forward and back in time. Um, obviously, you can't literally do that, but you can figuratively and you can with hypothesis testing and going asking, asking those questions. But, you know, how did this yep. end up right here? is always the most important thing. You know, I, it's like anytime I see a piece of trash on our front lawn because of where it's at, it's like, well, wait a minute, how did this end up here? Um, okay, it's a can of Modelo. Sure, I, I, I drink Modellos, but one, there's a little bit left in the bottom, so I know it's not from me. Uh, two, <laughs> there's... <Exactly. laughs> it's not ringed with meth yeah. for that Modelo margarita, yeah. as you call so, it. You know? So it's... No, no, it's but, but, but every one of those things is like it, it ended yeah. up in this this place exactly. in, in some some for some reason. So so being able to wind the tape forward and back in real time is is actually it, is, is sort of priming yourself, is, is and it's the same why I brought up the story, the, the insurgent, you know, it fit in here. I just thought of it because it happened the other night is okay where did this come from where is this going and then now because she's a kid it's like all right well who did she yep. hear this from or or is this is there something actually going on or is she just had some time and said i'm gonna put something together because she knows i make her well tell me prove it you know show show me the story prove what you want to do lay it out for me in a logical manner because i've been teaching that forever because that's how you win that because yep. it was a compelling story and it was great. Now <laughs> it's a different situation where, you know, no, we're, we're parents. Now, so now it's like, yeah, no, you're not she, doing that. But, 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 but the idea she's was she's demonstrated she, yeah. her thought process too, yeah. right? She's demonstrated to you her analysis. And why is that important? Because post blast analysis, battle damage assessment, all those words come from a place of after action review, where do we learn from the last experience so we can pay it forward. That's one thing. So time is irrelevant. Time is the most important thing and the least important thing in everything you do. Why do I mean that? Because somebody right now is going, well, I don't have the luxury of time when I get a call about a guy shooting. Well, you have all the luxury of time because it's going to end like this. You're going to run, you're going to be out of breath, you're going to scream, and then it's going to be bang, 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 bang. And then one of you or the other person is going to be dead. Every single video is the same. So if you don't slow time down, that's the inevitability of what you're about to get into. And every single gunfight, if you're only seeing the entire incident from your front sight post, then you're holding that 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 very small lens up to a huge map. Where am I involved in this? Are there multiple sh shooters? Is this just a grievance shooting and the person is done and maybe I can save a life and maybe it's the shooter's life? And all of those considerations, Brian, that's where we should be training, but we're not. We're flipping the tires, climbing the rope, and we're just pushing rounds down range. So you're going to be an efficient killer unless that video I sent you this weekend where, oh, my gosh, how many rounds you got to fire to kill just one guy. But the idea is that that's the end of everything. I don't care about the end of everything. I care about all that stuff that happens in the middle. And if you're in the middle, which you are, you're always parachuting right into the middle of your own life. Then do I have the ability to use a continuum to play it backwards a few seconds? and to play it forwards a few seconds. And that's what we teach. We give the gift of time and distance. How many times have I harped on it for as long as I've known you that the the is capitalized? And I know you hate it every time that I say that, but you know why? Because it is the gift and it is time and distance. And if we can master that part of physics, we're gonna have a, an incredible life. I've had 40 plus years of danger and I'm still here. And 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 people still sometimes listen to me. I don't know, you know, after the, the podcast, which I hope is still a big number. But the idea is, Brian, that we learned from our mistakes and we learned that you're never stationary. Neutral gets you nowhere. You're always in motion and that the things around you are in motion, too. And so if you can't put your thumb on the globe to stop it from spinning, then you have to move with it and be able to move your timeline backwards and forwards. How many times do I give that gosh damn walk evader, you know? it's not an elevator. It's a wonk evader. It goes sideways and upways and downways and backwards. Yeah. That's life. If you get the wonk evader in your head, you're going to be safer, smarter, and harder to kill tomorrow because you're going to play those what ifs. And, and Brian, the what if that you gave, hey, this is going somewhere. That means that you now acknowledge the fact that you're in something. And then the second thing was that 
hey, look, uh, where's this coming from? The, the same thing when the, the guys were giving me the diarrhea of the mouth on the traffic stop. Where's this coming from? It's I'm lost. I'm headed to work. Hey, I hate cops. I mean, there's like four responses I was anticipating. And I got the other one. I got the, did you know that deciduous trees like the elm? What? what? Where did this <laughs> yeah. come from? So right. anytime that you get a non-standard observation, anytime. You have to categorize that based on the baseline and you have to do it quickly. Internal, external baseline. I've seen this before and it turned into a shit sandwich. Boy, I'm in an area where there's a high crime and these people aren't following. There's unorthodox and, and uh, the, the moves that I'm seeing here uh, are anomalous in anybody's book. Once you're there, you know you're in a trick bag. Now it's how do I get out? How I've painted myself into a corner. Okay. How do I step out of the kitchen? Is there a window? Uh, uh, is there an ironing board that I can stand on and get me to that chair? That's what we have to do. So guess what the gift of time and distance does? The time and distance means I don't race into the situation so I have more time to make the decision before I paint myself under the corner. And, and still, we get people that are on the cusp of understanding yeah. that, but they haven't fully invested in it because police cars have sirens on them. And because you think you have to run and get involved in that fist fight right away. Or when somebody's going, hey, my fries are cold, you want to step in and intercede and be the good friend. And Brian, you don't see the whole picture. And that's where the evidence tape comes in. That, that's where the homicide unit is on the way. And, and so we can avoid that by giving yourself just nanoseconds. We're not talking about taking 30 minutes out of your day. We're talking about a few extra well-placed seconds during every 24 hours. And everybody's got that time. No, and you you brought it. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you brought up with the, the sort of your parachuting into the middle of a situation. I mean, but that's every situation yep. you're in in life. You know, when I walk into the house and my wife is talking to the insurgent, I, I walked, I just parachuted into something thing which means there was something going on before and there will be something after when i leave and will be when you're and, exactly and, that's brilliant and, that's a brilliant analogy and and the and the and, that, and that's how i i handle it i'm not going to come in off the top rope and go are you guys arguing about this again or what's going because one that's not gonna, certainly not going to make the situation any better yep. but two it, it developing that you know the, the 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 operational picture for what i'm actually walking into allows me for a better intervention strategy you know what i mean and and and, and that's uh, and i use this stuff here at home because it's it, you know, if you can do it in your house, you can do it anywhere. I mean, that, that's my thing is, is, is focusing on that. And that's why we even talked about last week is that the, focusing on the background noise, the vanilla, everything that's laying around, like my place is chaos right now because we're, we're getting a little bit of work done, but it's like the rain keeps coming. So things get delayed and there's stuff laying out. So I have to sit here and go, I have to accept the fact that I can't start on this next part of the yard project I want to do until this part's done and it's chaos and there's and there was a, a tree uh a, we had this big beautiful tree back here that because of the all the rain oh, the man. wind it, it smashed and it, it broke down on yeah. top of it it like and I looked like it was just one branch I tried to clean it out and it wasn't so I was like all right to me it's all chaos so I have to then reset sort of my baseline and be like it's going to be chaos for the next three weeks and then I can start on these things so now it's like it's like a way yep. to to deal with it right here at home but then that helps me every time I leave my house. That helps me everywhere I go. I mean, that that's so the point. Use that, pay that forward, because it is the point. It's exactly the point. Brian just used the term because he's thinking in the moment, he used the term intervention strategy because he wanted to describe what he was doing. And intervention strategy is de-escalation. It's baselining the environment, understanding what uh, elements are within my control and which are not, and which key points uh, are, are ripe for failure. Which which pinch points, if I don't do something right now, it'll turn into something much worse. I better sandbag that door or the water will come in. I better move the tree or it'll take down the electric uh, line. Look, that's life. That's the essence of life. And what I mean by de-escalation isn't this clinical term of de-escalation that police officers have ad adopted. De-escalation is how can I smooth corners for the rest of my life to make things easier. And Maslow had it right at the very beginning because Maslow said, man, wouldn't it be great if there was a key to this stuff and these things are important. But what Maslow relegated that to is a checklist and it was too rigid and, and it was too small and we can go on and on. But the idea is your goal by saying, I'd like to create an intervention strategy is attainable for everybody on this call today. My intervention strategy is gonna be this. I'm going to talk to my wife significant other or father. I'm going to take my car for the lube oil and filter. I'm going to, now those are the inter intervention strategies to what end, to what end? Uh, so our marriage is better. 
Uh, so I'm not fighting with my kids all the time. So my engine's not grinding and the light's not coming on. And, and on. The, those are giving, that simple? and they're giving you, um, they're giving you options, right? So you're creating options, you know, that you have, and they, they depending on the situation, they yep. might, they might not be great options, but having options yep. is better than just responding to what's happening, right? It, it, it might not be the best Let thing, me hit that but, real... but you, at least it's, it's your plan now and not the other person's plan. You're exactly right. So, so uh, uh, sadly, I have to have noise in the back. Uh, big, wonderful house. I got the jobs. The jobs, you know, is absolutely silent. Uh, uh, Java makes no noise, doesn't bark, doesn't do anything. It's just such a loving, wonderful dog. God, I don't know what her history is. I just hope she's better now. Uh, uh, but then as I've got the shows on in the background, I always watch like cooking shows or how to self-improve. I like that kind of stuff. I don't like the angry cook-off and I don't like the, the people you know, fighting to win a prize. Eh, it's not for me. But the commercials always go back to a cops style show that's coming up about something. And then they show a vehicle fleeing and a vehicle spins out of control. Then they show the cop and the cop goes, during those moments, you just, you're just not thinking. And then the next thing they show this and that and the other in a shootout. Well, it's impossible to be thinking during a situation like this. Why do they show the worst, Brian? Why do they show? If you're sitting there telling me that you're not thinking when you're involved in these critical incidents, then you need to go back to training. You need to slow your roll because you are headed for a collision. Uh, uh, as a cowboy, we used to call that riding for a fall. And, and Brian, you know what I'm talking about. You're out there skating on thin ice and you're riding for a fall. And when you do fall, somebody is going to get hurt because you're telling me right now, I went through the entire situation and I didn't think. Now, that's not it at all. Uh, all of life is a thinking person's game and either get on or be a number, you know, be a victim. Yeah, no, I, I, that's a, another, another great way to, to look at it is, um, you know, you, you can, can, how do I think my way out of the situation in, in every yep. situation that I'm in for, for, for my advantage or for, for a better outcome. Um, and, and that's sort of, or, or a different outcome. Well, it doesn't even have to be a better outcome when, when the chips are down and you're at that inevitable shoot, don't shoot all that other stuff. That's you know, what I mean. Maybe. I agree. I just want to make that distinction. The options might not be great, but if you're getting them yep. faster and you're, you're getting to apply your options and you're controlling the situation as yep. well. I mean, it's not, there, it's not always going to be good options for sure, depending on, depending on what you have to yep. do or what the situation uh, John, is. John Wayne in, in, uh, what was the John Wayne, the one eyed, uh, uh, Rooster Cogburn in, in the film that true grit. So the original John Wayne true grit, I saw every Sunday night for 13 years. Cause that was the incoming film. Cause a lot of that was shot around the ranch. Right. And, and so everybody wanted to see that film because it wasn't ad nauseum on television. And the, during one part, he tells the person, I don't want to shoot you and you don't want to be dead. And that was the greatest form of intervention, right? That was an intervention strategy and a de-escalation thing. Now, that might not work for everywhere, but what he was trying to say is, I've seen what might happen next. And if we rein it in right now with the gift of time and distance, it's a different option, well, and, right? And, I mean, that's beautiful. And you're, uh, you both, it's showing that you, you, hey, this is where it's headed, and neither of us want it to go there. Yep. So why don't we work together and, and create something There's better. some way out of this yeah. other than exactly. I'm totally in agreement with you. Brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, we, 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 we covered a, a lot on here, and, and you know, kind of operationalizing information is what we're talking about again. But I, I definitely want to get yeah. into this and have some of your stories, and I appreciate you sharing those. And, and I know, folks, you guys can, Thank you. can read the full story There's because there's some great sort of case studies in there and examples that you talk about um, in that you know, from the news. And, and so there's some really, really good cases in there uh, that people can read about and see exactly what you were talking about within the context of that story. I just wanted to bring it out and show this is a perfect example of, you know, of, of, you know, connecting the dots and, and how it, it can be difficult Absolutely. given the limits of cognitive performance and attention and given time and distance and given just how we prime ourselves to think. And so that was the big thing, which is why we kind of got into the last part of the discussion was what I wanted was that, well, how do I prime myself to think differently, to, to create different outcomes. And, yep. and that's, that's the whole, that's the whole point of it. Right. And that's how we, we, that's the, the big application of us with, with HBP RNA and what we do. Yeah. We get into a lot of areas and we do consulting with it, with different firms on all kinds of different topics, but the, the whole, the either way out yes. of all of them, one, our process is similar because we look at demonstrations of intent and everything behind HBP RNA, 
but the the whole point is driving to a better decision faster a a more uh a beneficial outcome for whoever our client is obviously and or whoever's listening to this podcast yes. even you know what's what's the best outcome for all and or for you i mean depending on what what it is but th- that's the whole point about connecting those dots and and taking that time to realize you're you're in a fluid dynamic world all the time, even if you're sitting at that lake all alone where those ripples are going out, it doesn't, doesn't matter. There's things that happen before you and there are things that are going to happen after you. And it's constantly, constantly in a state of flux. So being able to connect those dots, like you said, with that, that constellation in the sky, looking up and go, wow, that's chaos up there. Well, no, there's the big dipper. There's this, this is how we, that's, that's how you make sense. So we know that's East and that helps me find North. Exactly. Brian, spot on. So, um, uh, any any other final, clarity. final yeah clarity is good with yeah, any other final it, it, words one, yeah one quick thing we talk about on duty roll call a lot don't get mesmerized by what we're talking about and lose focus i don't care what you do if you're working at an automotive store or if you're working at city market or if you're working as a part of the crew that's going to go roofing take a knee this morning talk about it hey remember uh, sawdust on the roof plus an extension cord equals falling to your death. Let's not do that. Uh, hey, good morning. Uh, remember that doors in the back are locked. So if we get a fire alarm, everybody's got to go out this or whatever the news is right there. A little bit of a pep talk, a little bit of a, hey, remember when. And and Brian, you know that we wrote a hundred lessons learned for exactly that. Okay. If you find yourself in a similar situation, you know, this is how I got out of it. And guess what? In that one thing that they're going to read, if they get on Patreon, there's probably 10 or 12 different instances that you could use for that good on-duty roll call. And, and they're free. Okay. So if, if you want to use them, use them, just go out there and make sure that at the beginning of whatever event that you're about to do, whether it's a run, whether it's your workout, whether it's kissing the family goodbye before you go to work, have that little moment of clarity in on-duty roll call where you bring up just something. Can you imagine, Brian, if you got an inch better uh, uh, every day well, that, uh, that's, where you'd that's, be in a that's year? The, Come that's on. the priming. That's the cognitive warm-up. I mean, it just thought of the – I agree. In, in, even in uh, – because you brought the, the roofing example in Japan on construct, construction sites, they have people come in, and, and so for the first 15 or 20 minutes, they do these like – almost little calisthenic right. light warm-ups where they're moving their arms and their legs and there's, and it's like, okay, yeah, that's good for health reasons, but it's like, no, but that's also really good psychologically to say you are now at work on a construction right. site where there's danger. You have to be prepared physically, mentally, emotionally for what exactly. you're going to do. And it's a, it's, a, it's, it's another analogy we could spend a whole podcast episode on, but, but you know, that, that, cog- that, that cognitive warm up, that priming is exactly, you know, that's how you do it before I, before you leave the house you know, every day, but, um, yeah. And, and when the stakes are higher, guess what? Spend a few more minutes. It, yeah, exactly. When it's, when it is something that's going to be, you, you know, there's that heightened chance of something going wrong, then yeah, that is when you especially take those extra few, few moments. And, and that though, those alone are what I, I, that mitigates so many, so many potential problems yes. it, and it's so simple to do. So, um, just want to, reiterate that i guess well um we appreciate yeah. everyone for tuning in thanks greg for sharing those stories and and again uh head up to the patreon you can find the links in the episode details we've got so much more on there we've got the new tier that started and so we've got all kinds of different behavior breakdowns and the instagram explanation stuff and and different cases and the lessons learned and even more coming up and we're just going to keep adding to that so um i think everyone will enjoy it quite a bit and thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Please, please share an episode with your friends if you enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, leave us a, a review or rating that that helps out a lot. And don't forget that training changes behavior.